okay. We had some traveling, and people gone, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But we're back for our second episode for the first season. Um, last uh, time we played, we had a little bit of an audio problem. We're working out the bugs. I think we should be good for tonight. Here's hoping. But other than that, I think we uh, I think we should do a little bit of uh, a little bit of a, where we left off. So when we last left off, after we got Terrier brought back to life, Grim left with Wallace to make his way to Mistress Lillian's house of sin. Locke fled to Kellis' house. There's a little bit of a fallout between the Triangle and the crew. So I think we're going to start this season's episode two with Grim and Wallace heading to Mistress's, Mistress Lillian's house of sin. Uh, that said, I should probably get our, our lovely woman of the hour who runs Mistress Lillian's place up and running. So Grim, um, do you want to give us a rundown for what uh, the House of Sin looks like? So Mistress Lillian's House of Sin is a three-story establishment. Uh, the external is more or less plain Victorian, done in a uh, rather disturbing shade of peach. The roof shingles are rose. And everything from the external point of view seems to be bright and colorful. When you go into Mistress Lillian's House of Sin, however, everything takes a darker note. Darker shades of red, black, uh, with a perpetual musk that is unplaceable to the nose, lingering in the air. Bodies that are half naked or barely dressed scrounge around looking to make the extra coin for the evening and Mr. Lillian can usually be found keeping her boys and girls in check so Mr. Lillian is a very special individual you can see here shaved head crooked mouth from a scar looks like she's been in a boxing match her entire life Coming through the front door, greeted immediately by her and one of her women. I mean, probably one of the regulars that Grim goes to. Wallace, not seen by everybody else, still walking beside you. She goes, well, if it isn't Grim, back again. It's like, no matter how many times I give you what you want, you just keep coming back. I mean, the things you do, you have to get tired of, right? Oh, never mind. I'm, not, I'm just rambling. Old lady that has been through some shit. What are you here for tonight, Mr. Grimm? You here for one of my ladies? You here for something else? Grimm kind of thinks about this for a moment. And then he puts a smile on his face and he says, Well, Mistress Lillian. My appetite is rather insatiable, and I do believe only your girls can hit the right spot. Well, are we talking one tonight? Or are we talking two for you? Hmm. hmm. Wallace leans in and goes, I mean, you can get as many as I want, because I can go all night long unlike you. I do believe one will suffice. And the enthusiasm that Grim had a moment ago just kind of dies a little and falls off as the, the smile kind of turns into a, a half smile. Hmm. Only one, huh? All right. Uh, you want the, the full kit and caboodle? Hmm. As long as I can take leftovers home. Oh, you want one of those kinds tonight? It's been a rather stressful evening. She doesn't have to be pretty. <laughs> well, I mean, I have some of those laying around. Um, how about you make your way into the bar, get yourself a drink, and uh, I'll go get the room set up for you? Would be appreciated. 
and he'll uh, head on over to the bar. And you see her walk down the hall to one of those, like a row of tiny doors under stairs, and opens one of them up and reaches in, and it cuts back to you at the bar. Wallace is already in the room before you are, sitting at the bar, no drink in hand. It's like, we're here to talk to me, right? I mean, when I hear they talk to her. So let's have our conversation, shall we? Now get whatever you need to drink. I'll have I'll a night. i a corner, too, because they can't see me. Yes, we'll get a nice private seating area. And then Grim will turn his attention back to the bartender. I'll have a Pinot Noir, if you have it. Um, yeah, I can get you a Pinot Noir. Um, you want a bottle or you just want a glass tonight, sir? The mistress rang the bell saying you're getting the full service. The bottle. One glass. Bottle it is. He turns around and goes through a couple of higher shelves and pulls one out, sets it down, displays it to you properly. Right one? That'll do, yes. He cuts the foil off of it, uncorks it with a and pours you a little bit the taste. And Wallace starts making his way over to a corner table. And Grim drenches his palate after taking in its aroma. Excellent. Glad you like it. And he pours you the rest into the glass, hands you the bottle with it, and a towel in case there's any spills for yourself. Do you want a cigar tonight as well? Not tonight, Stuart. Not tonight. No problem. He kind of slides it back underneath the counter. Goes back to wiping glasses. And Grim will take the bottle, the rag, and the glass and head on over to a private table in the corner. So Wallace is sitting there, has his own glass of wine, almost matching yours in color, volume, everything. Almost like he's mirroring it. Legs kind of crossed off to the side under the bench in this little tiny corner area of the bar. It's quiet. Some violin music's playing softly in the background. So, Mr. Grimm, I got some questions about my sister, but I think before we get to that, we should probably discuss what you want to know first. It's only fair since I disappeared out of your fireplace. So what can I do for you, Mr. Grimm? Well, uh, the first and foremost question that comes to mind is why exactly did you choose now to show up at all times? Well, it's the best time for me to cross over. The holiday and all, it was a little bit easier for me to release myself. And then with my sister's death, uh, I was untethered to her, originally <laughs> just following her as a bird. Oh, you were the bird. Yep, that is correct. Now I can manifest since I'm not quite as attached. And I, I still take... have a draw. If she calls me, I'll disappear from here, go to her as a bird, because that's what she sees when she summons me. That may change in time, we'll see. She is very stubborn, though. And I take it you'll be around for quite some time. I mean... <laughs> I've been around the whole time. I don't really intend to go anywhere. So then the next question is, why did you appear to me? What do you mean, why did I appear to you? Well, you became untethered. And you seemed to wish to speak to me. So I wonder, why? Well, I mean, other people there saw me. My sister saw me as well. You other. A very uh, elegant friend saw me as well. And then the uh, ratty one who looks like she's been through the ringer. They all saw me. I just appeared outside to speak to you. Because my sister was having a hard time talking to me at all. And you seem like the knowledgeable person. I mean, I'm not going to go talk to the brunette. She seems unhinged. She stormed out of the room. All right. (laughs) 
So you wish me to make amends with your sister? No, uh, you seem to have questions for me. If you don't, I do have questions for you. Are we moving on to my side of the conversation now? Yes, I do believe my final question would be, what is, ex what is it exactly that you want? I want two things. The first one is very easy. The second one, not so much. So, we'll start with the easy one. So I don't quite know... I don't know if you're capable of doing the second one. First one, I would like to be released from my sister. I will still help out. She can find herself a new companion, a, a new spirit guide, ghost, whatever it may be. But I have things I need to do for the person who kept me alive, and it's very hard to do that attached to her. <clears throat> Every time I get close to what I need to do, she calls me back. Now, it's not hard. It's a trinket, something that she owns. If you were to get a hold of it, I think maybe the attachment uh, she has to me will disappear. I don't know what the trinket is. You only need to find that out yourself. See, if I were to know, I would just get it destroyed on my own. And after the trinket is destroyed? Well, I'd be able to be her brother as she expects with a little bit more ability than I used to have. After that happens, we get into the more difficult thing that I want. Now, before we talk about the difficult thing, are you interested in helping me with the little thing? What would be the little thing? Finding the trinket on her that keeps me attached to her. Now, why would you propose it as though it were two separate things entirely? Yes, I will assist you in your desire. Excellent. Do you need payment? Because that part would be very hard for me. I could do payment in favors. I could, for example, maybe get rid of your love interest's problem. Little Kellis. We could make her go away. I mean, unless I read the room wrong, of course. And he kind of leans back in his chair. Hmm. I fear that my situation with my dearest Locke has become rather precarious as of late, and that her... Is that the yes or no? Hmm. That question, I'm afraid, has a difficult answer, that I will need a clearer mind before I can resolve. Shall we go see what she has set for you and discuss after you've done whatever it is you do? Yes. Excellent. Yes. So you two sit and he matches drink for drink as you're finishing him off. Lillian comes back with um, someone draped in black. Veil over her face and everything says, I have a, a woman for you. <laughs> if that's what you're looking for tonight, the typical room is set up for you. The woman here has been a traitor amongst us, her husband, and her family. So seeing her go won't be too bad. Uh, she's willing, and her religion apparently makes it so that if she goes through with this, all sins are forgiven. Two birds... One stone. Shall I show you to your room, Mr. Grimm? Yes, Mistress Lillian. You, as always, seem to find the perfect answer for every question. It's the job, darling. It's the job. So she'd walk you down the hall, down a small flight of stairs in, like, this split level, overlooking the water. There's a little area where you can eat and dine if it's one of those moments that you're having, and then there's another set of stairs that goes down into a windowless room with a bed set up 
Now, for those who are listening, these two are different than most. Grim and his companion Locke have a little bit of a vice that most people don't. Not only are they assassins, they are also serial killers. So when the woman comes into the room with you, pulls off her veil, she has dyed bright red hair. Freshly dyed. Um, so, Mistress Lillian said that you could help with my sins tonight. Sins? No, I am not a priest. And he turns around and he closes the door and locks it. And he turns back to look at her and he goes, However, you do look a little pale, dear. A little sick. But don't worry. I'm a doctor. Well, she said that you're a healer by trade um, and that uh, um, you could help me through my problems. Um, I am a little hungry. Can we eat first? Certainly. What is it that you would like to eat? So on the table, there are like fruits and there's some cut uh, goat meat and potatoes with cheese, which goat cheese is pretty popular since things here are drawn by goats. Um, there's no horses really in this area in a world of twilight. And she would sit down and start eating and there's a bottle of wine there and whatever was left from your original one. And you can see Wallace sitting in the corner of the room, eyes glowing red, watching as the scene takes place. Now, we'll do some of this as a fade to black. As a dinner finishes and you make your way downstairs, bed sheets are already folded back and Wallace is laying on one side of the bed on one arm propped up as if to watch everything that unfolds. And he only says one thing to you and won't fade it here before you murder the redhead. So grim. Do you intend to kill my sister the same way as this? Cause if so, we may have a problem. And this would be during the night of courting, into the murder, and then I'm, I'm going to guess Lillian always cleans up the mess for you. Does that sound right? Sounds about right, yeah. All right. So fade to black, and the screen will cut over to Kellis and Locke at Kellis' estate. Did you take a carriage here? Are you arriving by carriage? Did you run here? How did you actually get to Kellis's place? Um, I think after seeing, because I, I believe Locke actually saw Wallace. Um, I think no one else did except for Locke and Grimm. And that's why Locke basically just kind of stands there as uh, Grimm walks away. And uh, she tries to compose herself and with Terrier not really there and not really knowing what's going on um, and she's still been out of it on and off during the past month uh, I think she's kind of at a loss and so she gathers up her things and then summons a carriage to take her to Whitechapel um, to meet up with, with Lady Kellis. Um, Are you taking enough goods to stay there for like a couple days to a week kind of thing? Or just the night? Uh, probably a day or two. Okay. Um, because I did agree to dinner and a play. The two things oh. that I hate. <laughs> That's <laughs> what right. What we'll do for her. <laughs> so, so that means that there will be shopping either in her closet or going somewhere in the market district to find you clothes. Right. That'll probably happen. And all the normal things to a date that you... All the parts of the date you don't like. Correct. <laughs> um, okay, so some of her uh, helpers and people who keep, are groundskeepers and take care of the estate. Fairly large, white building, 
everything is repainted every year. Um, black and white marble pathways that lead through the garden up to her not ginormous estate, but overly eccentric estate. I mean, if it can be expensive, it's more than that. And instead of normally her butler answering the door, Callus herself answers. Excited with a cloth bag and you're guessing a dress on the inside. Rock, I am so happy to have you here today. I have been looking forward to this date since, you know, all the bad stuff that has happened. Um, are you ready? Do you need a bath? Anything like that? I have people who can warm one for you if you'd like a little break before we go out on the night in the town. What would you like? Uh, Lax had a pretty... It's been pretty rough. Like, she basically dealt with the warden ring and all that creepiness the night before. And then, uh, Let's get you a bath. Yeah, Lock, Lock kind of nods and says, I could deal with washing off the... Uh, the holiday, as it were. Well, I mean, you were at my event, and things did go poorly because of your friends. I I'm glad we got you out of the situation. How about we get you a warm bath, we'll do a combination of lavender and a little bit of ghost scents uh, to give you a little bit of out-of-body experience, and then once you're happy and calm, we'll make our way to the play. I have a few drugs for us on the way, if you're interested. <coughs> I think Locke will take her up on the drugs. Kind of figured. Thing she, it was just a thing she normally doesn't do. First time. So now Kellis is beyond <laughs> giddy. Because not only are you in for the whole thing, you're, you're staying. You're obviously going to be here for the night. She also has you doing and partaking in things that she loves. She's one more <laughs> step closer to making you noble. For those that are watching, this is Lady Kelts. Well, excellent. Um, we'll get the bath warmed. Give it about an hour. You can settle in. I will get the dress ready. It is steamed for you. Uh, essence of some of the most prideful ghosts that we have found in spirits. Giving it a black as midnight, but shimmer like the stars of our seas. Very excited to see you wear it. And the play will be exceptional. So the camera would, you know, cut once to them prepping the bath, pouring in the lavender leaves and the oil. And then they open up this glowing vial. So for canon's sake, did we ever decide the general color of ectoplasm in our game? Didn't we say it was like a, like a, almost like a teal, like a blue? Yeah, like a blue-green. Yeah. I yeah. think I remember that, yeah. All right, so look blue-green, like, teal color pours in the water, and the water starts to glow. And when they bring you in, and they've given you a robe, when you look down in it, you can see the faces of people kind of shimmer and disappear. Okay. And when you get in, it's all perfectly well. Until you submerge underwater, and you start seeing the faces of all of the people you have murdered. Kellis doesn't know much about you other than you have some darker sides, but not the ritualistic part of it. And you see Cat and the other people, and they don't speak to you. It's almost as if you are looking up to the surface of the water, and it's them looking into the surface. If you re- or when you resubmerge, it all vanishes. It's just when you're underneath the ghostly wall. Okay. So everything goes well. Shower, or sorry, bath. People come in and bathe you if you want. I don't know, would she want a bunch of people coming in to bathe her, or is she a solo? I think she's just going... Like, how Locke... morose is she right now? Locke is going back to her roots, so yes, she will let these people bathe her. Okay. She so... actually was a woman of some status back in Arubia. And Kellis does know a little bit about your hang-ups, right? She knows about the redheads and what happens when they're around. Right. So she makes sure none of them are redhead. Instead, they're all blondes. And they come in and bathe you, and you go through the whole routine. You dress in the gown. The gown is black as midnight. Almost sheer, but the reflection of the stars that are in it that seem to move 
push away any form of transparency. And she is giddy when she sees you. You have a night out with her, and this choice is going to come down to, I think, a resolve rule. Do you have any stress right now at all? Uh, no, actually. You're stress-free. Because, to peel back the curtain a little bit, when we did our roles for stress, I had said, you know, I was going to hang out with Lady Kellis and mm -hmm. uh, got exactly what I needed to wipe my stress out. So we'll say that the night is perfect. And and even the play is enjoyable for you. She picked a play that wasn't about rose petals in a garden and two people getting married. Instead, she found one that is more about murders and the love between two people. And it, it doesn't mirror what you and Grim and Terry are doing, but there are similarities that bring a smile, the good parts of the relationship. And Kella sees you smiling. She just feels like she's hitting every chord, one after another, after another, after another. Like, the best Tinder date of all time. Right. <laughs> um, and as you get to the end of the night, get back to the estate, and you're outside in the garden and the pitch midnight. She has flowers that blossom at night and glow, and they're like a, a phosphorescent uh, greens and purples and pinks. She says, I'm going to only ask this once, because I know tonight was perfect. I know that. I planned it myself. And the arrogance in her is still there, but you can tell she's a little more chipper and in a romantic state than she has been with you in a long time. She's like, why don't you move in here and away from your problems? You could still work with your friends and do everything, but I feel the separation would be good for you and your healing process. I ask for nothing physical, only if that is what you want. No pressure, I will give you your own room. But maybe some time away from your friends will help you heal. Just an offer. So, there's a pause uh, in, in in all of this. Um, I think perhaps when she had asked before, Locke had immediately said no. <clears throat> um, the fact that Locke is even hesitating to say no um, is probably a very, is a very unusual. Um, and then she kind of looks down and and shakes her head and uh i think she reaches out to uh brush rosalind's hair out of her bangs and says i can't i um it may sound false to you but you mean a great deal to me, and I'm afraid that living here with you might do more harm than good. You are talking so, separate rooms, darling. Your own wing of the estate to just be you and to settle back into your roots. You mentioned a lot about your past tonight and the happy moments of your noble heritage. I would rather give that back to you than have your friends keep it from you. There is a reason I left our homeland. Well, that's me too. Mine was because my father opened business here, but I was ready to leave. I had my sins and problems there too. And we're adults now. We were children, or at least younger then. So, stop living with your friends. It's time to grow up. And she takes her hands off yours, and she just puts one on your shoulder and kind of rubs it down your arm. She's like, it is for you to decide. There's no pressure. Carriage is out front if you wish to leave. I am going to go into the house. I know pressuring you is never the way to go. It's taken me time to learn, but I have learned. 
I will be near the bar if you wish a drink and you wish to stay. If not, no hard feelings and I will see you soon. And she kind of lets her hand drift off and she starts walking towards the front of the house. Okay. Do you want me to give you a minute and cut over to Terrier? Um. Or do you have an answer already? I think I have an answer already, but I want to roll a fortune check. Oh! Or <laughs> Just for... Let me see how many rings do I have. <clears throat> what you got? Okay. All right. What are you uh, wanting this fortune to be for? It was just to see if I had anything on me. Um, <laughs> okay, there's two things for fake Skrlock on the board. Um, because Locke can't bring herself to accept uh, Lady Kellis' offer. But the okay. fact, like I said, I feel like the fact that uh, she even stayed to to hear her out might have been a big deal so she uh lock is going to leave but before she does she's going to reach into uh, a small clutch that she brought with her and uh i only have four so it's mm -hmm. not it's not a key um but well, that's she, good well it's it's good it's not it's not a key and it's not a lock but she pulls out um I'd say probably a, a finely wrought uh, silver flower um, okay. that is sculpted and based off of uh, maybe a desert rose from Arubia. Okay. And, uh, Are the roses there different looking than normal roses, as, as like as we know them? Yeah. Um, are they like sand flowers? Are they very, um, are they pointed? Do they close up in the heat or do they blossom in the heat? They close up in the heat. They blossom at night. And I think that it has two flowers. One of them closed, one of them open. Okay. Um, they're very fine. Um, and the petals when they're closed up, it looks almost like almost like a blade of gra of uh, grass. Okay. But at night, they spread out. Like um, peacock feathers, almost. Kind of, yeah. And I shouldn't say at night, but like when they when it's when it's hotter out okay. because the the lack of sun is a kind of a worldwide thing. So when it's hotter, um, yeah. it's almost like a thin blade of grass. But when it's co cooler, then the petals spread out and it's almost like peacock feathers. Okay. And uh, cool, it is closed. All right. And what were, what are you doing with these? Uh, I'm leaving them there for her. Um, on the. You're not going assume... to go give them to her. Um. Oh. That I'm gonna make myself do a resolve check for that. Um, All right. I was gonna say if you aren't going to roll a resolve. <laughs> So, I got a five. Mm hmm. I think that in this instance, I think she actually resolves to be upfront about it and will go to the bar. Um, shaking her head as she does so to not give Kellis any false. Are you going to go to the bar or are you going to get her before she makes it into the house? Because she's walking down a pretty long path oh, back into if the estate. If she's not into the house, then she would yeah. run after her. Totally your, your choice. Okay, so yeah. you run after her. So she stops turning around with a smile like she already had it on her face. Like I, she like she was counting her steps slowly waiting to see your response. And she turns around with arms open thinking it's something else. Right. And you pull up a rose and she goes, oh, um, thanks. <coughs> she takes it. <coughs> now, I am going to say I want to sway. If this sway isn't go well, 
There's going to be a mark on Kellis leaves for good. Okay. Wheel. Okay. <clears throat> so if you want to give me that, I will say it is a risky. It's not controlled. This is not a controlled. This is an emotional scenario. Right. I don't think it's desperate, though. Okay. So let me see what you can give me. Do I get anything for... I'll give you a bonus die for the rose. Okay. Because it's a, it's a good... Um, sign of affection and it's something from your homeland and hers because she's a Ruvian as well yeah this one here um uh we're not even in the heights so I'm gonna do it anyway I'm gonna spend two stress because <laughs> I feel I feel like the fact that Locke isn't even like Locke isn't just later I'm not going to even acknowledge you, I'm just gonna hop right <clears throat> in the carriage. I feel yep. it's pretty, <coughs> pretty stressful for her. Anyway. But all your stress got washed. It was a great night, so it's not like it wasn't for a good reason. Okay. So give me your roll. Oh go! Oh, thank God. <laughs> I was I was getting ready to. I like already had it out to mark off a pie piece. Nope. So she takes the rose and she looks at it, and she looks at you, and she goes. You should be doing this full time. Not your nighttime activities, not your shadowy things. I'm just saying, you're an artist, darling. And she's like, I will keep this. I'll be in my room. And she gives you a kiss on the cheek, realizing that you're kind of leaving. She turns around, she's like, Till next date, if you need something, you have a key. And as she says that, she opens her hand and puts a key to the house in your palm. She turns and walks away. Okay. Um. Anything else you need to resolve for this scene before you make your way back? I mean, obviously, you get your stuff that you brought with you, or right. it's in the carriage already. It's all, it's in the, yeah, it's probably in the carriage already. Like, she was probably hoping for, obviously hoping for the other response, and then we would have had the servants yep. go out and get it but just on the off chance which she was good to bet on that and you um, guys have been through this dance numerous times i think we have but it's never been this close right oh she almost won tonight she almost won tonight is based <laughs> yes she almost won tonight um she was ecstatic still happy she knows <laughs> how to take she knows how to take the good out of the bad right unlike um, certain other people in the scene um and i, and I, I don't <laughs> I don't think like she has an inkling of of what Locke is, but I don't think she's seen the full effect. Like not even. No, that no. Much she's, I think she's always season. seen the aftermath. Yeah. I think the she's... first time she's seen the really bad stuff was at the gazebo when her men had to clean it up. Right. And even then, I don't know if she went in. I don't think she wants to know that part of it yet. Right. She's she just like handle it and walked away. <laughs> Right, like, I gotta deal with people getting shot and whatever, just take care of this, I don't have time for it. So with that um, said, are you going to grab all your stuff and make your way out? Yeah. Alright, so f now the camera would fade away, music would kind of die out, and those who are wondering what we're listening to, we're listening to the Penny Dreadful soundtrack as we play through. You should be able to hear bits and pieces if the audio is working correctly. Let us know in comments if you can't. So we go back to Terrier's new room, which she was super excited to get. Currently, there's no Wallace in there. There's no bird in there. It is literally her, a skull mask, and a warden ring standing in the doorway. <clears throat> You're welcome, Terrier. <laughs> He's so gross. <laughs> He's standing there watching as you're looking at the mask. Because you just kind of finished your conversation with that thing. So, here's Warden Ring, just to get you in the mood. <laughs> Why do you gotta do this to me, Eric? Because I know you hate him. Oh, he's so gross! I'm gonna play Abomination here from Penny Dreadful. So, do you need help with the mask? Uh, Terrier spends a second looking at him in a very assessing manner and then says, not at the moment. I 
I see it left its mark on you. It can be dangerous. How so? Well, you can see the scarification on my face. And <laughs> I didn't just come from age. And this came from wearing it for long periods of time. From doing the warden's work. Do all wardens look like that underneath their masks? I don't know. We don't know what each other look like. I would assume. My mask... kind of... gave up on me when I started eating spirits. Something about against the code of the wardens, but they taste so delectable. I suppose I'll have to trust your palate. Oh, no, you don't have to trust. I can show you. And he reaches into, like, his pocket and pulls out a vial of that teal glowing ectoplasm with something pounding on the glass on the inside. Drink it. You'll love it. It's... This one would taste like sweet rose water. <clears throat> no, thank you. Yeah, tweets their own. He puts it back in his pocket. But, and he kind of, like, goes to step in the room and then realizes that it's not his room, so he stays in the doorway. Um, can I see the mask? I might be able to help you if I'm allowed to come in. It's his private quarters. And I don't want to upset you. No. You don't. Is that a note to me looking at the mask? Two? Uh, she kind of holds it carefully. Uh, and also sort of protectively, like, she doesn't want him really anywhere near anything that she owns. He just kind of slowly reaches into the room, but doesn't come in like that. The arm is longer than it should be, look. And the camera would be from inside the room, and all you'd see is his arm reaching through the doorway. Let me see. I can tell you whose it is. Whose it is? The masks. She very hesitantly, and like she does not want to do it, sort of holds it out to him. With kind of like a, a very, like, I don't want your hand anywhere near my hand, so I'm going to hold the least amount of this material as possible to, you know, fucking prevent our fingers from touching. I mean, yeah, I would do that too. He takes the mask, like, and he like kind of touches your finger as he pulls it away from you, like grazes it. He's like, well, the mask. And it's just you in the room. The camera does not show him. It's just you staring at his ugly face and the voice of him in the room. This used to belong to... Hmm, let me see here. Yo. Oh, this is a good mask. He was a fairly shadowy individual. Would you like to... Know who he is? You already said you would tell me. Well, I said I might know who it is, but do you want to know? I would have to come in there and show you. Or you can come out here if you'd like to leave your room. She considers him for a second, <clears throat> reaches down, picks up one of her guns that's on the bed from the ritual that happened earlier, mm -hmm. and very noticeably, like, holsters it and then picks another one up and holsters it. And she watches him until she finishes all of her pistols, which I think there are at least four of them at any given time. And then she starts walking to like leave the room. So he slowly slides backward into the main area in the velvet ward. We'll close him and move us over to here. Oops. So this warden is very uh, shadowy. Uh, he did not eat spirits like I did, but he did sell them on the vice market. Yes, Mr. Warden Hellas is, is very um, secretive in his activities. We've worked together before. Obviously, he is dead now, since you have his mask. But I do know where he used to keep everything. If you're interested in maybe visiting his abode. 
she reaches behind her and locks the door to her room before she says anything else. Good. Uh, you should keep your stuff safe. Yes. I would love to see it. Excellent. Um, fair warning. If he is dead and he still has things captured there, we should be very careful about visiting. <clears throat> you may want to speak to your friends. He was kind of rich. She holds her hand out for the mask and says, I he's, will. He's sniffing it right now, like looking at it and sniffing it. There's still flesh on the edge of the mask from you. He pulls a little piece off, eats it, and hands the mask back to you. I'm sorry, I'm just astounded by how gross that is out of character. <laughs> it tastes like ashen fire, like wet wood. Hmm. Well, if you get your friends, I would be happy to take you to his place. But of course, I'd want a soul in return. I'll let them know. Excellent. So he would wander away over by the fireplace and leave you to your doing. Is there anything anyone else is doing before the group eventually gathers up? And then as a group... When would the plague doctors actually make their way back together? Uh, I'm. I think uh, um, Carrier would try and talk to the skull again, Warden Hellis with an H. Was it with an H? Yep. And there is no response. Do you put it on? I assume that's how you have to do that. So yeah. So when you put it on, um, it starts to grow the attachment and immediately releases. <clears throat> going to have to talk to me at some point. And then she sort of, she puts it away in her uh, hip bag, I guess. Whatever bag she carries on, on her most of the time. And then she's going to get concerned because uh, she was not around when either Locke or Grim left. She was sort of stuck in that room with the uh, grossy McGross face. Yeah, you come out and no one's there. Do you just Good. start a fire and come, well, there's probably a fire going. Do you just wait by the fire? Yeah, she'll wait and, and if they don't, one of them doesn't show back up in the next, like, they've gone out and done this before while Terrier is around, so she knows kind of how long it generally takes. Um, so she won't get concerned until they don't show up for a significant length of time. Okay, that's fair. How long is Grim and Locke gone? Like, 24 hours? I think Locke is definitely gone for the night. Grim is only gone for about six. So Locke is, just, Locke is doing the walk of shame coming back home, except she has nothing to be ashamed about, really. Do you so. come home at night, at, at the late hours, or do you go to the Black Urn for a while? Uh, I think I go. Like, I mean, I don't know how. A little bit. How? What state? Like, if she would get a room somewhere else, or she would make her way back. Uh, I think she would get a room at the Black Urn just to try and uh, compose herself a little bit before going back to the Velvet Ward. Okay. Um, things are already so unstable right now, and I think the fact that she's the most stable person right now is really throwing her for a loop. <laughs> Me so too. She's uh, trying to uh, build up her mental fortifications a bit, and she feels she feels bad because, you know, they just got Terrier back, but and she's afraid that if she doesn't try it, if she doesn't get some sort of solitude, it, she's gonna make things worse. So. Right. No, that makes total sense. And Graham, you said you're gone about six hours? Yeah, before he returns. So Wallace kind of is walking with you, and as people are walking by, they'd bump through him. And he would, you know, comment on their state of being. Like, trying to prod you into extracurricular activities the entire walk back. Up to you as a player if he's able to do that, since you kind of got your 
your fill for the night. And he also, when you get near the Velvet Ward, is like, well, you did say we would have another conversation. Are we doing that now or later? We're doing that later. There's still a rather deep hole that needs to be filled. Are we putting a body in it? Not tonight. Hmm. Well, then you're no good to me for the rest of the night. I'm going to go check on Terrier. And he, like, slowly shrinks into the shadow, and you see a bird fly out of it. And Terrier, a bird would land, come through the window, and land on the couch next to you. So the group would get back together by what time? 2 a.m.? 3 a.m.? How late is Locke making her walk of shame? It's like 5? She'd probably show up at like 5 or 6, yeah. Okay. Um, so when Grim gets home, he actually goes to Locke's station and he tries his hand at making a key. What kind? And what for? Or do you not want anyone to know yet? What for is going to remain a secret to Grimm, but he tries to make a key out of, if she has the materials there, out of silver. Oh, yeah, so uh, her, <clears throat> for, for Grimm and, I, and for the viewers I, as well, um, her, her room is basically, her bedroom is basically the red satin sheets, almost like a hookah lounge, red satin sheets, red satin pillowcases, lots of... Uh, you know, there's like a dais for everybody to lay down on, but um, off to the side, there's like a more personal workstation. So I don't know if you want to hit that one up or the one that's downstairs. But regardless, both of them are well stocked with copper, silver, bits of tin, um, some gold. Um, not really a lot of actual jewels, um, just because that's not really her thing, I guess. Uh, but there's definitely both both workstations have a set of of good of tools and materials needed to craft jewelry, locks, keys, uh, charm bracelets, rings, whatever. So All right. So that morning you would come in late and Grim, I'm assuming you'd be asleep by then. If it's like 5 a.m. Terrier is still awake. Terrier didn't go to bed that night. She stayed up all night. Mm -hmm. Yep. She sits okay. down in the armchair and she waits. Grim, wow, right. Grim cannot sleep. And if the first key is a failure, he keeps trying until he gets something reasonably right. Why don't you give me a tinker roll? I mean, you've not done this before. It is a controlled situation, though. I would say probably reduced effect because you've never done this before. Oh, wait. Do you have tools? You uh, actually have I a would, whole workshop, don't you? Yeah, I would say, and, and this is me, and you, anyone can step in and say no, but uh, I think that the, the tinker would still stand with whatever he ends up rolling. Uh, if he doesn't have any points in the thinker, it'd be, you know, roll to, to take the lowest. But I he think does, though, because um, I, I think he uses that for some something already, don't you, Grim? I use that for medicine, doctor. Yeah. Medicine. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that uh, the, the workstations would negate any sort of penalties. Okay. So give me a roll, then. Luckily, she has good stuff. A four, which is take a step back, try again, or or take a step back, try a different approach, or try again. Or reduced effect. Yeah. You make one, but it's just not great. It's just a very basic key. You do it again. Yes, yeah, so it's not the key that he's got in his mind that he needs to project. So he tries again. So that means when she gets home, you're probably working in her station. Yep. Okay. Well... Lock, I think we'll start our scene there. Terrier sitting on the couch. Terrier and Grim, I'm assuming, haven't really spoken much tonight. With the what happened, and with her sitting in front of the couch, uh, in front of the fire, and Grim working on stuff. Are you guys pretty much not talking right now when she walks in? 
I think they're very quiet. Uh, Terrier would acknowledge Grim when he walks in. You sure. know, like, hey. You yeah, there's no animosity between you two. But otherwise, uh, she's quiet. She probably dug out a, one of her sketchbooks and is sketching by the fire while she waits. Okay. Well, Locke, you walk into Grimm at the downstairs station working in your workshop, which I don't think has probably ever happened before. Uh, yeah. Uh... And you look like you haven't slept, I assume. Right. Are you, uh... but you, are you pretty... In pretty mentally um, rested, though. Like, that's the best probably Locke's felt in ages. Right. Even with the two stress I took for uh, yeah. my sway roll. Yeah. So she's feeling, she's she's almost feeling almost normal. And she comes in, and there's Terrier just staring at the fire, and Grim's at my workstation. <clears throat> um, good morning, I thought. You two would have. Uh, doesn't matter. Um... Uh, Terrier looks over at uh, at Grim, and then looks looks at Locke and says, "We were waiting for you." I uh, I apologize. I had to repay Lady Kellis the promise of dinner and a play, um, and I just assumed that you both had plans after I saw after Grim left with when she just kind of trails off because she doesn't see Wallace anywhere um, she's like I, uh, I'm i sorry I didn't think we had anything planned we don't Grim... we, we weren't planning anything Locke we were waiting for you because we and she, she says the next thing, almost kind of confused, like she's never said it before. Uh, we were worried about you the last time you disappeared. <coughs> I got shot <coughs> and almost died. I, I, yeah, I still, I don't, I don't know how that happened. Um, and then everything is been so crazy since then, but um, Grim, do you need something for my workstation? And Grim just kind of starts like he he didn't even notice Locke come back in, and when he starts, he actually flails and stumbles out of the seat, and he just kind of stands up and he goes, N "No, no, um, I have everything I need," and he goes back to his uh. His hospital room or his doctoring station. Um. Oh. Okay. Uh. Anyway, I'm sorry to have worried you. I'm. I'm fine. Uh. Last night went well. Um. I feel better. Um. Although this. That's that's not important. What's important is how how are you doing, Terrier? Um, if that's what you want us to call you still. I hadn't put much thought into it. I suppose I was sort of um, sidelined by being dead for a while. Uh, you can call me. Whatever you like. I think I would like it if you called me Alexandra. Of uh, Yes, of course, Alexandra. I, I apologize. I just I didn't want to assume and like the entire time Locke's like kinda of staying away from her because she doesn't want to accidentally kill Terry again. <laughs> because she's not sure like she knows she was the cause somehow, but she's not sure how she was the cause. So she's trying to be very careful. Um I... I am fine, Locke. I am not dead anymore. You're not worried about me, are you? Of course I am. What? 
I was worried sick about you the entire time you were in your room, but every single time I went in there, you started seizing. <coughs> I, just, I don't want that to happen again, so. It... Hmm, how to describe? It only... Here, let me... Let me... See if I can... And, and she stands up and starts very slowly like walking towards Locke. Like she takes a step and then stops. And then takes a step and then stops. Like she's testing how close she can get to Locke before uh, anything happens. Uh, does anything happen? Well, while you guys are in the same room, it seems fine. When you are within, I would say, five to ten foot of her right now, you start to feel the pains, but it's not as strong as it used to be. So Terrier will stop kind of within that, that ten foot radius and sort of put a hand on her chest and say, when I get too close to you, it hurts here. It's like a dull ache. Do you want to try getting all the way into touching range to see how bad it is? Yes. Well, okay. she says, I'm, I'm going to try to see how close I can get to you. If I have a seizure, call Grim. Grim's in the room, isn't he? No, he went to his doctor's office. He oh. was like, I don't need any of this. Oh, you went to the doctor's office? Uh, yeah. Warden Ring is in there looking through your stuff. So... You, as you get closer and closer and get ready to make contact with her, lock that bracelet you wear with all the keys starts to rattle. Okay. And it hurts, um, Terrier, but not enough to, like, physically harm you right now. It's just aches. Like, if you have a wound and someone's poking it there with their finger. Hmm. Not nearly as bad as it was before. And as it, like, it gets close to there, the camera cuts to Grim walking in on Ring. And Ring turns around, like, no, does not have a problem of what he's doing. And he goes, I left the lady alone. She's... She doesn't like me. You have very nice stuff. Yes. Are you looking for something to eat? No, I had something earlier. Uh, but I do know whose mask that was. Did Terrider tell you? No, I have, have not really been myself as of late. Mm. I have nothing to compare it to. So, yeah. would you like to know about it? Sure. And he's like got one of your scalpels in his hands, and he's like looking at how clean it is and puts it back down. He's wearing gloves right now. Fill me in. And as he begins talking, Grim will walk around the room and anything that's out of place, you meticulously put it, pick it up and put it back in its spot. And that scalpel, if it's one centimeter to the left, he'll move it back one centimeter to the right. Every single thing is in the right place, but <clears throat> your disposal area for like bandages and whatnot. That has been opened and dug through and reclosed. Everything else is exactly where it should be. And that scalpel, he put it right back. I mean, it's... You double-check it just because nobody else does what you do, but he's pretty meticulous about it. He did mention he already ate. And the the disposal, it's not a mess, right? Like, he at least picked up after himself? Oh, yeah, it, it, you can just tell it's been rifled through. Okay. And it, it, the flash of a person leaves behind a residual um, ectoplasm if they've died. I was looking to see if there was any in here. I only have one vial left, um, and I'm getting very hungry. Oh. Well then, you you won't find any down here. And Grim, Grim will kind of nod for him to follow, and he'll leave the room. 
right? He follows after you while the two ladies are in the other room making contact. And, and like, Terrier's got a hand on her chest, but they don't look like they're dying from it. And Grim pauses on his way to the stairs going up, and he looks at the both of them. And uh, then... Terrier, actually, uh, sorry to interrupt. I was going to do a thing. Can I do a thing? Is that cool? Sure, why not? Go right <laughs> ahead. Uh, so Terrier's going to get into, uh, like, touching distance of Locke, and then she actually reaches out and grabs Locke's hand. Like, she, the hand that's on her chest, she reaches down, <laughs> grabs Locke's hand, and moves and puts it on her chest. Like, where her heart is. The and one with the keys? On the, on the bracelet? Yes. Okay, so when you do that, they start <laughs> jingling and smashing each other loud. Like, you just keep hearing... Like, keys banging and chiming. And they're all, like, floating out and splayed out around her wrist and kind of slowly, like, levitating and rotating. The bracelet is not touching her wrist. Uh, and Terrier says... Uh... Hmm, how to phrase this in a, in a way that's good. Uh, she says, when I am near you, it does not hurt like a fresh wound it hurts. Like I've run for days. It's a, it's an ache here where my heart is. And that's so probably the scene he walks in on. <laughs> right, and, gr and uh, Ring looks to you, looks to them, and goes, mm, We should leave the room. You don't say. That seems personal. Terrier, don't die again. Lock. Uh, and Terrier, like, drops Locke's hand like she's been burned and takes a step back. Like she. The jingling kind of fades down. <laughs> Locke. I... I'm... So, we're all Locke, here. I Locke. can... I... 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 So Locke, uh, Locke actually is gonna step up, kind of like how she used to be uh, back in, in Season Zero, and she's just gonna look at Grimm and say, whatever this man has to say, we'll listen to it, but you and I are going to have a talk. Ooh, um, I don't want to interrupt that. If that's more important, and there's possibly someone who dies out of it, I can I can wait. She just kind of looks over to Warden Ring and <laughs> narrows her eyes. She's like, No. Okay, I see. No, that's not the right thing to say. Um, I can just tell you about it then. The, the mask uh, the terrier has it, it belongs to a, a warden house. He is very shady. Um, he has a place in Char Hollow near the water. I think he was fairly well off. Um, he worked for a group of smugglers selling spirits that he didn't put in the books. With her having the mask, it means one of two things. Um, he is either dead or retired. In either way, he is much weaker than when he had that mask of his. Wardens lose their power when they lose the mask. So, maybe the souls left there? As he, like, perks up, like... Obviously, this is totally a selfish agenda for him. And he looks around the room at the silence. Anybody um, like the idea of maybe... When we decide, we'll send a messenger. What do you mean? I live here. <laughs> Terry like looks at Grim and Locke with kind of like an astounded like please don't tell me you told him he could live here. Why well, a perfect watchdog, I never sleep. I can't. <sighs> uh, 
I was hoping maybe I could put a bed in one of the rooms. I, I could sleep, you know, if you need me to, but I just don't. I could just wander and build and eat and make sure the fire's going and answer the door. Watch people while they sleep. I don't think no, that... So nothing happens. I, I, I don't think that watching the door would be necessary. Or answering the door. Why? I think that you may give the wrong people the wrong impression. He like stands up a little straighter. He's like, I am a... Yes, people are a little frightened by me. I am. You probably need a room then. I mean, look at Terrier. She's one errant movement from drawing her pistol and putting one in your neck. Neck. No, she isn't. We are friends. She let me touch the mask. Obviously. And Grim just stares at Terrier for a minute. I have a feeling that Grim is just getting a lot of surprises today. <laughs> I will um go shopping and let you all talk. Is there anything you would like from the black market? Sanity. Mm. I don't think we can get that down there. I've never seen that sold. Foxglove and a new scalpel. Hmm. He puts his hand out for coin. And Grim will put a coin in his hand. Excellent. I'll be back <clears> in a few <throat> hours. Let me know what you'd like to do. Would you like me to swing by? his place in Char Hollow and see if anybody's there. <laughs> I'll take that laugh as a yes. And he walks out the door. So leaving the group here, what is the group doing while Ex Warden Ring is checking out this man's place in charge. High key hating how gross he is internally. Mm -hmm. It's pretty <laughs> solid amount of Terrier's brain. It's just like, oh my god, he's so gross. That's Terrier's entire thing right now. Like for the next few hours, she's just gonna high key be like, that fucking slug. <laughs> Ugh. I so know we're dealing with our relationship problems. I know we're dealing with our relationship problems, but I have to say. That dude is gross. <laughs> He's so gross. Is there anything that the group wants to do before he comes back with information? I mean, I don't know if we have a resolution. Are we all just going to pretend like this this heart-touching, key-jingling incident didn't happen? Or is somebody going to bring it up? Uh, I mean, you guys ignore all your problems. I assumed you were ignoring it. Grim's not going to bring it up. <laughs> See? Oh my god. Like a true relationship. Locke <laughs> is actually going to bring it up, I think. Um, in light of what happened the night before for her. So, <laughs> well, I'll leave it to you three then. Yeah. Um, so, Locke's like kind of just confused. And uh, she finally drops that killer mask kind of thing and she actually looks kind of hurt when she looks to Grim uh, and she's like what happened before the past month we risked a lot to bring Terry or Alexandra back and then I know I left I just both of you were in danger, and and Grim, that's that's a first for you. When it comes to me, and I didn't, I know I, I I fucked up. I should have told you at least, but I was just so burned out, and I didn't know what to do, and so I just went to someone from home, and then Terrier dies, and she's in a coma, and. You guys seem to be blaming Kellis when she's just been there for me, and then you're running off with a demon who wants to kill me? 
Uh, he's my brother. Actually, no, I don't know that. Never mind. So what Sheldon said say is, that woman shot me. She's the reason I was in a coma. It's a mock. It's like, so she's already pale, right? She gets even paler. She's like, she shot you? Is And that that's why you were in the coma? It she wasn't was, because of me? She was holding a contest or something. I don't know. Uh, your people's ways are not my own. Not that I remember mine, but that is irrelevant. She had a contest and Grin left. I don't know where he went. And then she challenged me to a shooting contest. One on one. Her and I. Two targets. Uh, no, no, one. One target. Shoulder. It's on the shoulder. Was the prisoner's dilemma you could shoot the other person and kill them and you would lose, but they would be dead and no one could do anything about it. I played fair. She didn't. She shot me. She points at the area where she had locked hand on her chest. She shot me right here. That's the last thing I remember. I was a part of this game. I played along for the sake of finding out where you are and were. And when I saw that someone might be exploring a different lead, a familiar face, a recent face that we brought in, I followed after them and found you in your state of revelry. That wasn't revelry. And she kind of bites it out. That was an attempt to keep my problems in check. And, uh, she kind of, like, brushes off her shoulder, but when she does, she does it with the four fingers to Grim. And then finishes brushing off her, her cloak. Ah. <laughs> Silly me. I, that is why I was rude to her. She did say that she felt responsible for what had happened. <coughs> she should, she shot me. She neglected to mention that. She mm. seemed more focused on my well-being. She's that cheater. And that really, like, she says that with such vitriol. Like, she's not even really mad that Lady Kella shot her. She's more angry that she, she fucking cheated. She didn't play the game by its rules, and that's what pisses Terrier off. That's... <laughs> that is true. Um, but Fox, like, so that's that's why you're both mad at me is because I was with her, not knowing the full story. If I had known what had happened, well, it's not like we had time to explain, Locke. I was dead for you. A month. You have a, a, a very good excuse. I, I can't. I cannot argue with that. <laughs> but Grim? Why didn't you tell me? If I had known that, I would have turned her the way the first time she showed up. 
Well, I'm glad you didn't. She is the reason I'm back in my body now. I can be as... I can dislike her as much as I want, but... She and I are... Even. <laughs> I... Have not been well as of late. Ever since I had to... Or did. What I thought I had to. At the... At the manor. It was... I don't... Just real quick, I... Do we think that Locke remembered that, uh... Grimshotter? I don't think we've ever properly established if she does. I don't think Locke remembers. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that. I don't think she remembers that. <laughs> Ever since I did what I had to do, it is left a hole in me that I can't quite fill. Is that why you went with that other person to the to the house? <laughs> Perhaps I, I I don't know. I know that it wasn't the same. That it was not as refreshing. That it left a festering wound. That only making this could heal. And he'll pull out the key that's like rough shot and kind of worn where you can see all the chips into the crude shape and you'll just like waggle it. I think Locke's a little horrified, um, but not not because of Grim making the key, um, and not even because of him taking Wallace to the House of Sin at this point. Um, she kind of sighs and looks at Alexandra and looks at Grim. She's like. I don't want you making those. And she looks to the key. She's like, but if you have to, I will help you make them. <laughs> I just want to say, did, did Grim and Locke get another hobby? <laughs> well, because I, like, the way the. And then in, in Hadrathi. Locke says, I hope I didn't do that to you. I hope I didn't make you more like me. Damn, Gina. And Grim will, like, squint his eyes and kind of look up in thought. And he shakes his head and he goes, also in Hodrathi. No, I, I don't think that it was you. I think it helps me quell the voices, the whispers. It gives me something to focus on. And then he oh, looks... That's probably part why Locke does it, too. And then he looks oh, back at Locke. I could understand what the two of you were saying right now. It has... I'm sure absolutely nothing to do with this group or our dynamic, and that it is not at all important that I know what you are speaking about. I just wish that perhaps if you were going to be secretive and exclusionary, you would do it in private. And she reaches over and like picks up her sketchbook angrily and like, like gets up and walks into her room. Oh, the new emotional terrier. 
we, I think we both kind of stunned at that emotional outburst as she walks away. Is there anything else that the three of you need to go over before Ring comes back? Uh, Terrier leans out of the, her room before she closes the door and says, he doesn't stay anywhere near me or I leave. And she goes in and like slams the door shut. Angrily, angrily, to be noted. And that is as upset as you have ever seen her. Actually, I think it's the only time anyone has ever seen her be upset. <laughs> well, at least out here in the physical world. Yeah, it's that we not are currently in. Right. <laughs> versus in her mind. Right. <laughs> or as a ghost. Anything else for Grim and Locke to go over? No. Grim pulls out one of the uh, one of the flowers from his pocket and he just begins eating the petals. What the Okay. Uh Locke's going to shake her head at that. Um kinda like those aren't necessarily safe to eat, but you know, whatever you do, you you're the doctor. Uh, but getting uh, high on your own supply. Yep. Um, she kind of looks at him and says out loud, uh, in in a the imperial language that um, if if you want to learn how to make keys. I will help you make them. If it helps you concentrate, you have permission to use either of my workstations. Yes, they do help me concentrate. And he, he pauses and interjects with a pedal in his mouth and he chews it slowly before he continues helps me concentrate on what's important and he'll just look up and he'll look at Locke before walking back into his uh, medical ward uh, right. well Locke feels like she's taken a few steps forward and a few steps back but feels like she mostly gained some ground <laughs> so she's just gonna kind of sit on the couch and go how is this my life <laughs> tis the way of assassins in the night right um <clears throat> so with nothing else then um we are at our halfway point um, i'm gonna do ring coming back really quick with this information and then we'll take a break so ring shows back up it's raining out he comes in he does not dry himself off doesn't shake yes. off doesn't hang his coat up there's just water through the entire front part of the room. And he goes over to the table and he sets down like a wrap up leather uh, folder with like leather around it and un unfolds it and lays it on the table and goes, all right, so listen, I, I found out good and a lot of bad. Um, you know, this is the stuff you want. And he hands the bag over to Grim. So, People do live in his office, but it's not wardens, and it's um, another gang, I'm guessing. Uh, somebody else has moved in on his turf. Um, do we have any problems with the old lamplighters, the lamp blacks? Are we fighting them, murdering them currently? No. No, we're not. Well, we will be now. Be. <laughs> He's like, no, no, we're and not. He, like, turns and, and looks like, at you like, but we can be. Like, lock eyes with his milky eyes, like, holy shit, someone agreed with him on something here? <laughs> He's like, here's what I found out. I didn't go into the establishment. I just went to it. Here's what we are looking at currently. 
So as you can see, I could see into the first floor pretty well. He is in Char Hollow on the water. There's a back entrance and a main entrance. There also seems to be some form of metal-covered walkway from a building to the north over to his building. But you can see where he's at right now. I will show you. And he flips over the piece of paper and points to the building on the map that you guys have on the wall in Char Hollow. He is across from Docks, uh, his old place. But I did see a lot of these lamp blacks running a mill in the district and around this building specifically. All the information I could gather without dirtying my hands and trying to go in. There's no signs left of the old establishment for the warden's office. Uh, there were two people on the roof smoking. And there seemed to be at least four walking around on the inside. I watched from the candle shop across the street. This is what I know about this place. Um, I hope it does some good. Um, and he, like, looks at you as you're playing with the pedals. He goes, what are those? Oh, by this point in time, he's uh, Grim's already taken the fox glove out of the bag and he's beginning to grind it into uh, usable liquid to put in the syringes. What are the petals? They look like marigolds. What are they? The, the what? And he, the he looks he looks confused. The one you're chewing. He's not chewing on petals. By the time he gets back. Well, there's some in the corner of your mouth. You're oh. stained. Look. Then Grim will raise his fingers to the side of his mouth as he brushes some of the flowers away. Oh. We grow them in the park across the street. They help hmm. keep the crows away. You have a way to keep the wardens from finding us? That is delightful. We are going to have so many souls. Oh, where's Terrier? Is she in her room? And he like starts walking towards the door to knock on it. She should see these too. Should I? Let, let me get her. <laughs> She's <laughs> your friends. And he walks over and raps on the door like... <laughs> trying to take the bit for ring. He, he like, leans in like and puts his cheek on the door. Taria, I brought back information. Would you like to come see? Uh, there's a, a a pause and then without saying anything or giving any warning, she like pulls the door open on him. So he's like, his face would be like right on where the door was and he like, slowly steps back and his milky eye makes contact with you. He goes, oh, I brought some maps I bought uh, of the area and some sketches. They have a lot of people there we get to kill. Joy. Souls for me, shooting for you. And he's like waiting for you for something like a reaction, like a smile or something. Like he did something good. You're not uh, smiling. Did he say that? Yes. How about smiling? She looks yes. down at him because Terrier is a relatively tall woman. She's probably almost six feet. And I'm this assuming... guy is if he wasn't hunched over from age. So she looks down at him and gives him like a, uh, and then like smiles but it's like this rictus kind of like doesn't reach her eyes sort of like real fucked up looking like I've never smiled in my life but I've seen other people smile so I'm gonna attempt to imitate that. He kind of grins back with like his long thin tongue and goes it's a good start and he walks back to the table pretty hurriedly with all the papers that are spread out. As soon as so, his back is turned, her face goes, like, completely blank again. So he he walks over, points out the parts of it. 
he understands. Uh, we're going to take a quick 15, 10, 15 minute break, get some drinks, water. And if you would like to pause our audio, can you do that on your end for us, Alan? So we can still chat. Is that feasible? Or do we're we just need to mute? Doing it right now.
in the chat. It's pretty cool. And we're back. All right, everybody. Sorry that took a little longer. We had some things come up. This We're going to wrap this one up in the next 30 minutes or so. Um, and then we're going to do a separate video for the full heist coming up. Um, so let's get back into it. So Ring walks over to the table, has everything sitting there for you. The two maps that are on screen right now are what you can see, or the one that's on screen now is what you can see. He goes, I don't know much else. Um, I'm not the best scout. I stand out in a crowd. But I do know downstairs there seems to be at least three bedrooms, maybe four. I haven't been able to go upstairs, though. I can handle that. The scouting, I mean. Well, um, is there anyone within your crew who can help us? Or am I it? It depends on what you mean in terms of help. If you need a second story person that'd be me well I mean there's so many of them four lamp blacks and two up top smoking we don't know how many go back and forth uh, they may have more people who work out of the establishment we could call cross call upon cross you guys haven't seen Cross since the incident. That's true. But we could always try and find her, I guess. I would say if you, you send out a message for her, that's totally cool. I mean... Locke doesn't remember Cross. <laughs> she doesn't nope. remember much from that night. Terror actually goes, oh. And then turns to Locke and says, you wouldn't know Cross. Cross is a, um, former blue coat. She's... Now let's not bring him into this. Her? It? She's on our... Her? She's on our payroll. Oh. I said it's former. Blue. Yes, I know, and I'm a former warden. I understand. I mean... If she can provide muscle or get us in contact with someone who has a few layabouts to get into a rumble with her lap lax. She killed a man. And Darrier points at the front entrance next to Locke's workstation and goes, she killed a man right there. Locke's fingers twitch a little bit like she needs to go clean um, before before uh, kind of shoving her, her hands in her pockets she's like, interesting she killed somebody in our home fits Techn right in, I suppose <laughs> technically she killed him in the doorway and he fell inside and then I grabbed him by his wrist and pulled him in so that she could close the door. <clears throat> well, how do we want to do this? And I'll cut the, the, the conversation there and go into the rules of the heist, of the score. So, looking at this, what is the group thinking they want to do? What, what uh, style uh, position do you want to go with for this? I, I would say stealth or assault would be Terrier's uh, MO. Stealth in that, you know, get Terrier up on the vantage point, send Locke and Grim in, maybe make, you know, on the top, have Cross go in on the bottom, you know, see how many people they can take out quietly and silently before it goes too loud. That would be Terrier's suggestion. So I'm going to flip through. Uh, so, Locke, now that she's mostly recovered, even though she's still got some issues, uh, is kind of thinking, and, uh, she suddenly looks pained, like she has a headache, and, um, 
she's about to start saying something in in Hadrathi to Grim, and then remembers what Terrier said. She shakes her head. She's like, I don't. Uh, if we do this, I would recommend stealth because if I'm remembering correctly, the Lamp Blacks are friends of our friends. That is correct. They are. Unless we can convince the Foghounds it would be worth their time and interest to maybe ditch the Lamp Blacks, but... And with me being best at the role of the silver tongue, I'd recommend more of a deceptive method to entry. But I know it is not for everybody. So I would second walk in a stealth approach. I would hate to see an ally of an ally turn into a foe. Tyrion turns to war the warden and goes, I, ju I just said that. They don't listen very well, do they? And he like leans in, almost touching you. Tyrion was like there earlier. leans away from him. And, and Locke like just shakes her and she's like, I'm sorry, I just... The Foghounds are actually our allies. Um, and that's why I'm more concerned. Am I coming along for this or staying here? Do you have any useful abilities in combat, Morden? Did you really just ask me that? Yes, I did. Are you going to answer or obfuscate? I was a warden, lady. Was a warden. <laughs> yeah, so I can't attune anymore unless I have a soul in me. But I sure as shit can fire a gun or stab someone in the gut. She nods companionably, unaffected by his, his getting angry and goes, Good, yes, you may come. He just stares at you for a little bit until his gaze kind of wanders back to the, to the table. He goes, So? Stealth is what it is? Is that what we're agreeing on? Sounds like it. And I'm sure by the eve's end you will have your fill. Oh, I intend to eat while we're there. I get my powers back when I eat. So with that, we're going in. The group is going to do stealth. Everyone should probably pick their load at this point before we roll our engagement roll. Oh, you know what Terriers... You know what Terriers doing. Stealth is hard to do with a heavy load. Well, if I'm not she, going she's in the done it before. She's, I she's mean, you can. It's just before with full armor. So. You don't start in a controlled scenario <laughs> when the heavy, like, if people looking like, why is she bringing a rifle, four pistols, and a wheelbarrow full of explosives? I mean, it is Char Hollow. Let's be real. We're just going to burn stuff and I mean, fire off fireworks. It's fine. Terror <laughs> has done heavy loads on stealth missions. She's never not declared a, 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 a heavy load. And every time it's fucking saved somebody's bacon. Yeah, I mean, she... really, heavy load affects conversation and it will affect stealth. Like, if, if it push comes to shove, those are the it, two... It might affect prowl, yeah. Yeah, prowl, like stealth with prowling people. Yeah, so this yeah, is totally. What... Charm Hollow is tenements. This place is a shit show. So people do carry weapons around here. It does have a lot of... Um, a lot of walkways and paths between buildings. The security and safety is only two dots. There's no wealth here normally. And the criminal influence is one. But the Lamp Blacks are not usually found in Char Hollow. So hopefully their foothold isn't huge. Right. Uh, well, since... Char Hollow is a shit show, and um, she is sometimes presenting herself as a as a lady, other times hoping not to be seen at all. I think she's actually gonna go with a normal mode. 
which is unusual for her. And what about man with the silver tongue? He's also going to be going in with a normal load. So stealth, normal, normal for Lock and Grim, heavy for the murderer. Sniper, I mean. Thank uh, you. I think because his ability to prowl is not fantastic, um, he is going to go with a light load for Mr. Ring. So let's set up where you guys, uh, how this goes. Who rolled the engagement roll last time? Does anyone remember? It um, might have been either me or Grim. I know I rolled a fortune roll, but I think that was for my ghosts. So let's look at what we got here. We have we start with one for luck, operation particularly bold or daring. I mean, there's a decent amount of lamp blacks here. Uh, you don't know a shit ton about the facility. I don't think it's overly complex though. The plan seems stealth go in, and I'm uh, assuming the group all agreed to wipe them out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, when have we ever left somebody alive? Okay, does the plan's detail explode a vulnerability or target or hit them where they're weakest? Take 1D. The target's strongest against this approach, or do they have particular defenses or special preparations? Mm, they do have two guards up top, but you have a sniper. I almost say this might be either neutral or weaker, because it's not where they normally... Yeah, that's kind of yeah. what I was thinking. Um, I would say 1D because this isn't their full crew supplement, so that's two. Uh, he did bring back maps for you. That would give you three. I think it's my turn to roll an engagement roll. Alright. Because, yeah, I think um, Grim rolled for the Terrier Ghost situation. Okay. So I will take you back to the Warden's office map. Shall I roll? Yes. It could be worse. Could be worse. It's we're risky. Makes sense. We are, you know, assaulting a place where there are a bunch of guards and stuff. It's fine. It'll be fine. We'll be fine. It'll be okay. Let's just not do that thing where we make a contact and then the very next day game, game, like, they die. Looking at you, Devro. Looking at you. Yeah. If Devro could not be... <laughs> if Devro could come back, that'd be cool. <laughs> as long as he's, like, not angry with us. We tried. Sorry. <laughs> Is Terrier thinking for the setup for this fortune roll to kind of get where we are? We're in a risky position, but you guys probably are in positions. Are you setting up across the docks? Or are you going all the way across the building? Uh, whatever, so I think it's across the river. The one that has the best vantage point for yeah, shooting Yeah, I have us on it right now. Yes, right that would be where she would set up. So and... would you be on the docks or on the building? Would you be like on a boat? Did you sneak onto a boat and you're set up on a boat for this? Or would you be on a building somewhere over there or just on the shoreline? Uh, probably you usually she... don't want to be lower. You usually want to be yeah. higher. She would be up in a building across the river. Okay. So you're in a building across the river. Um, where would Grim be going, looking at the map? How would you set up yourself for the start of this? Are you planning on going through the door? There is the walk piece that goes across the top for, for Locke and for Grim. Is Grim talking his way in instead of stealthing? Grim is not the the best at stealth. Um, so he looks at he looks at Locke and he goes, "Would you be opposed to me trying to talk my way in?" No. And she's not being mean about it. She's like, no. She's like putting on her fine shadow cloak and getting her like climbing gear. I'm marking those off my load right way, because uh, I think Locke is gonna do what she was meant to do and be the. Uh, second story person. It's going to go into the rooftop? Yeah. Alright, so going through the rooftop. And Grim's going yeah. through the front door. Alright. So let me, I will quickly give you the setup for what everything is. At least for what you can see. Let's make this the right color. Alright. 
<coughs> we have one gentleman here who came out of a door and is smoking. And another one who is over here watching this corner. And they don't really patrol, they're just kind of kind of I mean they walk across this top piece really, but they don't do much else. Um inside the building. Scrolls over to there. When you walk through, you can see there is a gentleman sitting at this desk. There's a gentleman walking down the stairs. And then there is someone standing here talking to someone over next to the cell. Um, and then the doors that come in are here. I did that right. It looks correct. Yep. Okay. Um, so upon approaching, you being the stealthy one, Grim. Let me grab you three. Pull you over and I will shrink you down. All right, Locke, you can put yourself where you want. Drum, you're going to the front. I will put her on the waterfront over there. Or you said you're in a boat, but you're in a boat. Okay. So with this being the approach, here's the setup for the risky scenario. For the first thing that you would end up having to do. Uh, Locke, I'm assuming you're trying to... You got into the building that was across the street. You have stealth across. Are you going across the top, or are you going in through the walkway? Um... Probably trying to go in through the walkway. Okay. So if you're going in through the walkway... Let me bring up another map for you. <clears throat> and I have, this one has nothing in it just because you're not in the room. Right. So outside the door, you can hear conversation going through. Uh, you can hear the conversation above you and the people walking across the wood creeks as they're kind of smoking and you can smell that old, really, um, really bad tobacco. Um, these guys are dressed in black cloaks, hooded. It is slightly raining out today. The building is in bad shape, but on closer inspection, it is kept up really well. For being a tenement area, things seem to be in pretty good shape. Okay. Sorry, you need a drink. I'm starting to cough. Um, the door to the place is solid. Um, it has a couple metal bars reinforcing the wood door. There is two padlocks on it. They are pickable. Um, from the other building, you did not see a window into the place from this side. Okay. That's kind of the scenario you are in there. Terrier looking across, you can see in through the second story window. So I will reveal that for you. This is the second story. Inside, there are a ton of chairs and living space, and this looks like where either when the warden was there, hung out, or maybe what they have set it up as for themselves. And that's the lower right, correct? Yep. Yep. I'm pinning this over to the right now. All right. And my plan is to, because apparently Wallace can talk now, that's the thing I've just learned. Uh, is to see if he will relay messages back to uh, Locke or Grim if needs be. He's like, yes, but I would have to fly. Arr! I can't be near you. So it'll have a delay. Better than nothing, I suppose. Hmm. Would you like me to fly into the building? Can I still talk to you even if you're there? No. Your distance, do you have distance communication? Can you see through his eyes? Yeah, remember that's how yeah. I, I you caught can them still, that You can still time. talk to him then, yeah, then yeah, absolutely it would work. 
Okay, yeah. So she'll ask Wallace to hang out with, and because she doesn't know Locke doesn't like Wallace, she'll ask ask uh, Wallace to hang out with Locke. It's because... not that. It's that Wallace Wallace does not like Locke. Yeah, she doesn't know that either. <laughs> so the setup is that there's three up there that you can see. You can't see into this room, and Locke can't mm -hmm. see into it either. So I have this second building over here just in case it's necessary. Kind of, it's just a blank, blank second floor. So Grim, you approach the front doors. They are uh, like reinforced, like metal doors, not actually wood. They are painted a red originally, but looks like the, the uh, lamp blacks have repainted over it and washed it. There is no electricity here. Everything is lamps. They're all lit around the building, torchlight. You don't see anyone inside this immediate area. But there is somebody at the desk in the other room. How is Grim wanting to approach the situation? Or do you think you've already made it in with the engagement role being a four? Um, I think, I think Grim is gonna enter and try and start a poker game. <laughs> so you've been talking to, to Lamp Blacks outside somewhere? Yeah. So are you already, are we going to say you're already in the building then? Yep. Like he's he's already he's already got a deck of cards and he's trying to pull people into a game. How many people let's let's set the scene with how many people you pull into the game with this risky scenario. They've already brought you in. Are you dressed as a lamp black then? Yeah. How is that how you got in? Yeah, I'd say I'd say he he caught a lot lamp black on the street running errands. Uh okay. and grabbed his clothes and Knocked the dude out and put him away somewhere. Maybe not knocked him out. Maybe a little more permanent. Maybe he got a nice, healthy dose of foxglove. Maybe, uh... Maybe Grim set him aside as a midnight snack for somebody else on the team. Ooh, maybe he's eating him already. <laughs> he's just waiting for the spirit to come out, because here's the thing. When the spirit comes out... Didn't they say it takes a couple minutes for spirits to leave the body, usually? Pretty it, sure it's not instantaneous. I think it, it can take up to three days. Yeah, I thought it took but time. After three days, it's... Yeah. So he is working on getting the spirit to come out of the body you killed, and that is what he is doing right now, because that will give him the ability to use a tune, which you probably want. Or maybe not. You guys haven't seen him really cast much yet, so... So you set it up. All I want for you, are you using command or sway in a risky scenario to set up this poker game? Sway. And he'll he'll come in dressed up and he'll say, All right, all right. So I got I got this pack of cards here and I got a I got a pouch full of hot coin. Who's game? Alright. Me a Don't forget, crew, to look through the powers that you now have as the Plague Doctors. Because you guys have three powers now. Yes, you do. Thanks for that reminder. Because you have uncanny preparation now. Yep. So if you're ever in a desperate... Give me your your sway roll. Ooh, there we go. All right. So, guy walks up, uh, answers the door. You guys, you've made your way in, and he clears the desk off of like just a bunch of paperwork and random stuff. Piles it up, sets it on the little table to the left. He shouts down the st or up the stairs and goes, "Guys, guys, we got another one of ours wants to play some poker. Who's fucking in?" And a couple other guys trail downstairs as well. Now you set yourself amongst a few people willing to play. Give me Locke. Locke, you would hear a door open and close. 
Okay. A little more room to breathe upstairs. Okay. As you get a full group of people down there to play. One extra guy shows up, because you usually don't play six people at poker. It's usually five. And he goes, who am I supposed to play if there enough room at the table? Same fear. I've been on watch all fucking night. You are going to give me space. And he looks to you and says, guess you ain't playing, newbie. And he reaches over to take your cards. And that's the start of the engagement role being in a risky scenario. This guy is going to try to bully his way in. Um, <laughs> Brock, I just want a tinker to see if you can get the door open. Okay. And Terrier, are you shooting from across the way or are you waiting for a signal from your bird? I'm going to wait for a signal, but I will try and survey out the locations of all of the people so that okay. I know where they are. So how <laughs> about you give me... Um, a survey. This isn't a stealthy situation, so it's controlled. You're just watching right now. Um, and then the same thing for lock, picking the lock. But would you say, lock, you probably are in a risky scenario right now since you're picking a lock, entering where someone could be? Dear God. Oh. <laughs> I know what's happening to her. Okay, well, let's see. I mean, do you think it would be a risky scenario or a controlled for you? <laughs> Since you're entering, it is stealth, but you are, you guys' engagement role It'd be risky. was risky. It'd be risky. Okay. Uh, let's see, do I have anything else that I... Get out of here, that's what I wanted. Not that. Okay, well I'm going to pick my fine lock picks out of my fine shadow cloak and use them, which I believe increases the... I was trying to see what my uh, fine tools give me. But... Oh, okay. Fine two tools raise um, uh, the effectiveness. So if you roll one or three, it becomes a four or five. I believe okay. that's how fine crafted stuff works. Okay. So we'll four to five see. becomes a six. Standard bonus dice. Well, I got a four then. So that's a four becomes. Uh, I got a I got a three, so it becomes a four. Three becomes four. Okay. So it's risky, but you're picking the lock. You kind of click it a couple times. Um, I will say it works. You hear someone upstairs on the roof go, oh, it looks like Sam must be back. My shift's done. As you pick the door and open it up to walk in. So we'll move you down into this room. This guy is going to move and make his way into the roof to get down. And then Terrier rolls all ones. You got your scope out, you're ready. And the boats that are in there, you see one put all of its sails out on the mast and block the entire view of the building. Are you shitting me? So your option is you're controlled. So it's not like you're like set up in the window, perfect perch. You got some food there, like ready to go. You falter, you can press on by, press, uh, by seizing a risky opportunity. Or withdraw and try a different approach. So you could leave and try to snag another room, or climb up into the building further. Or you could withdraw and go to a totally different building to get a better vantage point. I don't know. I Does are... this ship look like it's moving? Nope. People are coming out and they're repairing sails. <sighs> Terry will try Dim and... Dim one's dough. Terry will try and find a better vantage point then. So you could go to the roof. Um, if you want to prowl your way up there, give me your prowl roll. Now, we said we were doing stealth. She started in a risky. I wonder if she... Yeah, when action starts, you're still in a risky. Does the, does the position that you picked to begin with change that roll at all? I mean, when we start, that's kind of... 
what the issue is. It's risky, so he did it, but there's complications. So she would have started at risky. Okay. I didn't know if picking stealth, if you got bonuses, you get penalties if you go out of the stealthy kind of thing. That's what it is. So give me your risky roll to climb up and get into the roof without getting caught in the building that you're in across the street. There we go. Look at you. So you have a higher vantage point. Give me a survey again. See if you can get a better view of things since you are now doing it. Um, I would say you are... You've went to a higher area. You're outside now, so people can actually see you, putting you in a risky position. There we go. All right. So what you see is the guy up top, what they do is they go over to a ladder that's here, climb down, and they enter through this walkway. And that means that this guy will be coming in behind Terrier. I alert Wallace, or I figure uh, she actually talks out loud when she's talking to Wallace most of the time, even if he's not there. So it kind of makes her look a little bit insane. But she whispers, uh, Wallace, warn walk, someone's walking up behind her. I'm like, hmm, yep, I'll do that. Wallace does not go to her. Well, I tried. No, I know. He tells you. I told her. She's good. She knows. And you do see Wallace come into the room with you, Lock. Okay. And he's, like, sitting on one of them, like, near the doorway to get out in here. Which is, like, through here. This actually has an opening. With that set up, um, behind you, Locke, you hear someone walking through the metal-covered walkway towards the door. Grim, you're getting ready to get into a fight with them. And now that means that Terrier is going to have to either be taking a shot here in a few minutes or figuring out what she's going to do. With the stuff that we have going on, we are going to set this up for us. We are going to record next Monday, everybody, to finish this off. Um, we have some personal matters some people have to take care of tonight to get things done. And we will come back next week. And we will not only just do the rest of this heist, I think we're going to try doing downtime so everybody can see it as well. I know I love the downtime stuff. I'm pretty sure since they get experience, the players love the downtime stuff as well. <laughs> I do, I do. But the downtime is a lot of fun because you get to role play it out. So I think we'll we'll tack that onto our next episode depending on how this heist goes so people can see the RP. Anybody else got anything before we, we head out for the night? Nope, I'm good. I'm Everyone all good? is great. Sorry Wallace is fucking you over already. My, my brother would never... I trust yeah. him implicitly. He would never betray me. Well, pretty sure you will. Pretty sure right, he already is. <laughs> he very, I'm no. absolutely positive he has plans for some people in this party. That's what seances do, man. Uh, <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in, and I apologize for the shorter feed tonight. I hope you enjoy it. I hope the audio is better than last time, and we will finish this up next Monday. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Bye stream. Bye stream. <laughs>